Hi, and welcome to Allen High School pre-AP chemistry class. We are doing our last video, I think it'll be the last video, on limiting reactants or reagents. And we're focusing on using what I'm calling this method. Start, shift, stop. So let's see how that works for us here. Uh, um, this lays out the complete question, and then we're going to, once we fill in our grid, answering each of these questions becomes pretty straightforward, and I think conceptually more logical. So let's give it a try. We have zinc, and it's reacted with copper to sulfate, and I kind of blew it here. I thought I added an extra little column there, but I didn't. And we're going to get uh, zinc sulfate and copper. All right, now the question is asking us about copper. How, what is our maximum yield of copper in grams? So we actually don't have to consider the zinc sulfate in this one. Now we have 35.60 grams of zinc and we have 100 0.00 grams of copper sulfate. So let's go ahead and fill in our chart. 35.6, just get everything to moles. Everything that's given, get it to moles. That's grams, don't forget to label, 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 label. One mole of zinc for every 65.38 grams. And that gives me 0. 5445 moles. So that's going to be 0 0.5445 moles. Remember the start is always in moles. Now we're going to do something very similar with our copper sulfate. We have grams of copper sulfate. Mass to moles, use molar mass. You have to be so tired of hearing me say that phrase. 159.62, and if we cranked through that math, we get 0 0.6265 moles of copper sulfate. Now, this one is nice because when you have a one to one mole ratio, the limiting is simply the smallest. You don't even have to estimate how much you have compared to what you need. Uh, we just need to pick the smallest. So I know I'm going to lose minus 5, 4, 4, 5. Now, this is a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So I'm also going to lose minus 0 0.5445 moles of this. Now we started with 0 moles of copper. Again, when you're in the shift, you use your magic mole ratio to shift. One to one, everything's just a one to one to one ratio here. Makes this problem a little more straightforward. Now remember your stop is simply your start plus your shift. Okay, and your stoichiometry, that's zero. So right off the bat, I know my zinc is my limiting. And here I'm going to get 0 0.08200 moles. Uh, if this was a negative number, I knew I blew it up here. And I would go back and pick the other substance as my limiting. But it's a positive number here. And this must be my excess. How do I know? Because there's some left over. It's in excess. I have more than I need. And then 0 plus this is 0 0.5445 moles of my copper. Now we have everything we need to start answering the questions that we are asked. So A asks us how much copper in grams? So that's my question, how many grams of copper did I make? What's my maximum or theoretical yield? Well, let's see, moles to mass use. You got it, molar mass. So I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass of copper, 63.55 grams per one mole of copper. So now I know that my answer to A, if I
if I did this math, this times this, I would get uh, 34.60 grams of copper. Label, label, label. All right, now B asked what was our excess and what was our limiting, and we've already answered that. Zinc is our limiting, and copper sulfate was our excess. So now we look at C. C asks us how much of our limiting remains, or how much zinc remains? Well, zero grams. We used it all. That's what we mean by limiting. We're going to use it all. It's going to run out. And now we have to find out how many grams of copper sulfate. Well, we already know our moles of copper sulfate. So moles to mass, you got it. So we can go from moles to mass using, hmm, 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 hmm. There we go. Didn't say it, spared you that little ditty there. Molar mass is 159.62 grams per one mole. Sometimes you'll be giving molar masses, and sometimes you will be asked to calculate them. And I get 13.10 grams of my copper sulfate remaining. There you go. It all just falls right out of the grid. Because once you get to that heart of chemistry, it's easy to get to almost any unit that we need. We're going to do one more just to make sure you have it. Plus, it's a slightly more complicated mole ratio, and I think that will help us. So we're going to end this with 1029. Here's the overall. It asks for, let's pay close attention to this, it asks for our amount of ammonia, and it asks for it in liters, assuming STP. So that's going to be important. What's our limiting? What's our excess? How many liters of hydrogen will be left over? Okay, how many grams of nitrogen will be left over? Well, we can get that right from our, our SSS, our grid. Okay, so let's set this up. I have three hydrogens. Now, I'm assuming that you can write a balanced equation. So if that is a bad assumption, you need to come see some consultants to get some expertise to help you out here, okay? Now, I have 48.0 liters of hydrogen. I have 15.0 grams of nitrogen. And you know what? That hydrogen's at STP, which is very important information. And we're producing ammonia. Now, first thing we want to do is get to moles. So if I have liters at STP, I want to get to moles, and that should be pretty straightforward. 48.0 liters of hydrogen. If I'm at STP and it's a gas, I can eliminate liters, go to moles, and there's 22.4 liters equal to one mole. So if I did that math, I'm going to put it down. the answer down here in my grid. I got 2.143 moles. And I'm assuming you're doing a little calculation here, and you're double-checking my math and making sure you understand this. And you can always pause along the way to see how much you understand. Okay, 15.0 grams of nitrogen. Don't forget that's diatomic. I actually almost did this when I was calculating this. 28.02 grams here. That's a two grams, all right? And I get 0 0.5353 grams. And I have no ammonia that instant before they've had a chance to react. Whoops, that's moles there. Sorry about that. Let me erase that. I'm glad I caught that. Some of you have already caught that and they're like, Oh, Dina. All right, there we go. Now, I want to show you real quick what would happen if you picked the wrong limiting. Well, I know. Let, let, let me get us the right one first. I need three times as much nitrogen, hydrogen as I have nitrogen. So I need, you can even do that calculation or you can estimate it. Three times 0.5 is 1.5. 
So, but certainly you can calculate it if you want. Multiply this by three, and I don't have that number, so I'm gonna do it real quick for us. 0.5353 times three, I need 1.6-ish moles of hydrogen. Well, I have more than I need. It's an excess. So I'm gonna tell you right now that hydrogen's excess and nitrogen's limiting. But what if we blew it? So don't write this part down. I want you to just watch me. What if I screwed up and I thought this was my limiting? Watch what happens. Well, by definition, you lose all of your limiting and that goes to zero. For every three hydrogens I use, I gain a nitrogen. So I'm going to take that point, that 2.143 and divide it by three. And I get 0 0.7, or excuse me, yeah, 4, 1, 4, 3. And you notice, I hope, that I get a negative number here. Well, I can't have a negative no moles. That's illogical, right? So that's how you can do it. If you do, you know, do the best you can to do your evaluation on using your mole ratio. But if you blow it, and come up with a negative number, say, oh man, I blew it. It really is my nitrogen that's limiting, all right? So let's go back to what we figured out at the beginning. I'm just showing you that if you make a mistake here and pick the wrong limiting, you'll be able to go back and recover. So I'm going to lose this many moles. Now, to get to either of these, when you're in the shift, you use your magic mole ratio to relate them. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 1. And so I'm going to gain 1.071, right? For every one of these I lose, I gain 2 ammonias. Here, I'm going to lose, because it's reactant, we're losing reactant, 1.606, because for every three hydrogens I form, or I lose, I'm going to lose one nitrogen. Just multiplying it by two over from, okay? Now, to get this next, I simply add those together. This goes to zero, which means I, you know, pick, probably picked the good limiting. This is positive, which is extra reinforcement, that I picked the correct limiting. And I got 0.537 moles remaining. So I've proven numerically that I have leftover or excess hydrogen hanging out, that it was my nitrogen that was my limiting, and it runs out. By definition, the limiting is going to run out, and I'm going to form 1.071 moles of ammonia. Okay? Now you can address any question that you're asked. So A asked me my liters of ammonia at STP. So if I know moles and it's a gas and it's at STP, I can use 22.4 liters per one mole. So I got two, three sig figs, 24.0 liters of ammonia formed. So that's A. Do you notice it, it's a pretty straight shot once you have this grid filled out? I've already done B. That really falls into place as I'm filling out my grid. And for C, it's asking me how much of each remains. Well, I have zero grams of nitrogen left over because we found out it was the limiting and the limiting runs out. So for hydrogen, if I know my moles of hydrogen remaining, it doesn't take too much math to get to liters. Now, do be careful what units they ask you for. It did ask me for 22.4 liter per one mole. It's a gas, it's at STP, and I got 12.0 liter H2 remain, or are left over. Okay, so once we get to that heart of chemistry at the end here, I can move to whatever unit the question asks of me. All right, that's actually it for this unit. So until I see you in class, this is signing off.